In this video, we're going to get started on cutting out and preparing our apron dress for sewing. So you can see I have my fabric here. I've also uh, torn the two strips that will be used for the ruffle and I have starched both of those and allowed them to dry and then gave them a good press. So I've printed my pattern off and I am going to cut out the back and then make sure I've got my rectangle for making this dress in the block method uh, for the dress front. So you can see I've got my pattern laid so that the edge, oh, let me adjust this, the edge is right next to uh, the salvage and this salvage has, I don't know if you can see this, it, it does have rather pronounced little holes in it. I prefer not to use the salvage on this particular fabric. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, back cut out. Okay, so that is finished. I'm now I'm going to go ahead and mark it before I even move anything here. So to do that, I'm just going to flip this up and mark the underarm pleats. That's the first thing. The other thing that I like to mark while it is still um, right here with the pattern piece is the armhole and the neckline seam allowance. And the reason for that is it will make it so much easier when you go to place your lace on this, uh, whether you're pin stitching or zigzagging your lace on, if you've got that seam allowance marked, it will make it so much easier. And I've also marked um, the fold lines at the top and at the bottom here. So I do this one layer at a time. I'll Got that layer, I think you can see well enough that it's marked, and then I'll put the other layer on. These sheer fabrics, you can see right through them, so it doesn't matter which side you mark on, uh, both sides work. If you are using a heavier fabric or something that you cannot see through so well, I highly recommend these, uh, well, I don't know, they call them seam allowance rulers. This is a seam allowance 3 8 inch pattern drafter. Since my seam allowances are 3 8 of an inch, this works great. So on this one, you would place it on the outside um, of the, 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 you'd put it on the cut edge, and then you can trace the curve 3 8 of an inch away on the inside. And if you've got straight areas, it's the same thing. You can put the straight edge here on the cut area and then mark that seam allowance. So you just go around and find, um, you can slide this ruler around to find the corresponding curve, but this makes really quick work of marking anything. So I will put a link to this in the comment section of the video in case this is something you'd like to consider. I, whoops, I use those quite a bit. So the back has been cut out and marked, and I'm left with the front. And as uh, I mentioned before, this is going to be sewn in the block form, which means we are going to have a rectangle that is slightly longer and wider than what we need for the finished garment. So it can be really any amount, but as long as it's an inch, which gives you a half an inch at the top and a half an inch at the bottom, uh, for the length, you can just tear the fabric, okay, so that gives me the length that I need, and then I'm going to do the same thing and tear the fabric for the width. And 
And I do end up with these little curled edges, which I will press, and then we'll go ahead and mark this. Okay, so I have my fabric pressed now, and I did press, I folded it in half to find the center front, and I did a real light press there so that I know where to mark the center front of this particular dress. I like to mention I am a big fan of the faultless heavy finish spray starch. That's what I use for all of my heirloom sewing, um, for all the different techniques because it gives a great um, stiffness to the fabric. So now I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to mark down the entire front of the fabric. So I've marked the center front here and now I'm going to mark the pleats to the uh, left and to the right of the center front. If you're using the tiny 1 8 inch tucks, uh, they are spaced 3 8 of an inch apart. So I like to use this ruler because it shows, hopefully you can see through this well, it shows 8 inch increments on this ruler. So. Uh, I like to use that one and I place the 3 8 inch line next to, well, that's right on top of the center front line and then I can mark the remaining tucks. If you're going to do something different, for instance, on this I used quarter inch tucks and for that you would need to have instead of three inches wide across on your fabric, three inches wider than the widest part of the fabric, you're going to need to make sure you've got a little bit more. So I did four inches wider than the widest part. And the widest part obviously is going to be at the hem. So you would measure here, double that measurement, and then add your three inches or for bigger tucks you would add more. So for this one I've got four, uh, I added four inches and because these are quarter inch tucks your spacing has to be adjusted for that as well. Okay so I have all of my lines drawn in. I put it on top of another piece of white fabric so you could see these lines better. Um, if you make a mistake, which can happen when you're drawing out your lines, the best thing that you can do is rinse it out and start all over again um, because to try to put another line close to you're never going to get it right you're probably going to make a mistake and it's just not worth the headache so the next line that we need to draw is our horizontal line how deep you want these tucks to be and there is a chart in the pattern and it varies depending on the size that you're making how deep you want to make these tucks. But I thought I would give you um, the rationale or the, the theory behind some of this so that you can make a decision for yourself how long you want them to be. Because on this dress, it's a bigger size and I wanted longer tucks. So obviously I didn't follow the measurement that's given in the pattern. However, if you're doing a smaller size, you definitely don't need to go really long with the tuck. So this one has shorter tucks. But there is going to be some variation uh, depending on the neckline that you choose to do and the depth that you want them to be. So again, that can vary and I want you to be empowered so that you can make a decision of what you would like. Now I tend to like, uh, let's see, this is a six month size. And these tucks are, oh, I would say two and an eighth inches down from the square neckline. And I like that look. So what you really want to do, if you're picky about it, is place your pattern on top of the fabric and you remember we've got a little extra at the top and a little extra at the bottom. And then depending on the neckline that you are going to sew, if you just want, you know, say two and a half inch tucks, uh, you would want to measure two and a half inches 
from the completed neckline, which for the round neckline, that would end up being right here. I'll mark that with my blue marker. But if I want it two and a half inches below the square neckline, it's obviously going to be longer than that. So you see how I've done that. So you can either use the given measurements in the pattern or lay the pattern piece out and determine where you would like these tucks to be. Now my favorite, and I'm sure you could tell because most of the samples were done with this, is the square neckline. So I will probably use that square neckline here. So that square line is about there. If I want a two and a half inch tuck, then I'm going to take, and I probably don't want two and a half because of the size of this. So this is two inches. You can see my line here. I'll probably go two and an eighth. So I'm lining up one of the vertical lines here with my center front line and then I am going to use my blue marker and I'm going to draw two and an eighth inch below. So once you've determined that go ahead and make your vertical line and you will see as we start sewing these tucks in why it's so important that these are done accurately. Okay, as I stated before, on this particular dress, I plan to do the twin needle pin tucks. Now, a couple things I'd like to mention about that. When you are threading your machine for these twin needle pin tucks, when you go up at the top, let's see if I can, through the tension disc, if it's possible on your machine, you're going to want to go to the left side of the tension disc for the left needle and the right side of the tension disc for the right hand needle. Most machines you can do this. There are a couple machines that that does not work very well for and so you're going to have to uh, fi figure that out for yourself. And that's one of the reasons I always recommend that take a scrap piece of fabric the actual fabric that you're using and do a couple test samples of the stitches to get your settings just right and to make sure you're real happy with the outcome. Now I've had this machine a long time so I already know what uh, the settings are for lightweight fabrics so I've done that. On my machine I need to tighten up the tension in the bobbin to get a pretty pin tuck and um, this dress has the twin needle pin tucks. The beauty of using the twin needle is you get perfectly, I mean you can see this is perfectly accurate because the needles are perfectly spaced apart. So that works out just right. Um, some machines you may need to either tighten the top tension or loosen the top tension that's where you have to get to know your machine with these. And so do a sample on your fabric, and I always recommend writing down the details in pen on your fabric so that you can save yourself time the next time. Uh, the next time you want to do this, you can test it, but you may only have to do one test run because you've already got a starting point. So I am going to start, this is my center front line, I am going to start with either the pin tuck on the right or the pin tuck on the left. If you start in the middle and work your way out and you decide three pin tucks is enough, then you're done. So that is my reasoning behind that. And you do want to shorten your stitch length to uh, 2.0. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this and you want to make sure that the blue line is exactly in alignment on the center of the blue line that you've drawn. Okay. Because the accuracy that you drew these in and the accuracy that you stitch these with is going to determine whether you end up with a pretty pin tuck or a not so pretty pin tuck. And then you want to make sure that you stop exactly 
on that blue line for your last stitch. Okay, there's the last stitch. Okay, so here is my completed pin tuck, and I'm quite pleased with how that turned out. To finish this pin tuck, it's a little uh, fussy, but it gives you the prettiest results. You want to tug on the bobbin thread gently, and that will raise the uh, little loops from the thread from the thread that's on the front of the fabric. You want to pull that to the back so you can tie this off. Once you have the loops pulled to the back, I like to just do an overhand knot and I will place a, the point of a pin right next to the fabric and pull and that will bring your knot right here sitting on top of your fabric. And at this point you have a choice. You can either clip these threads off quite short and you're finished or if you prefer to be a little more um, fancy and to have a little bit more of a finished look on the inside, you can thread these through a hand sewing needle and then slide the needle into the tuck uh, for about an inch, then come out of the tuck and then clip your tails off there. Okay, so here I am being fancy. I've got my needle threaded and then I slid it up into the tuck just, you know, a little ways. Before you actually pull that through, turn it over and make sure you don't see any of that needle or thread on the front of the fabric. And I don't, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this through. And then you can clip this right next to the fabric. And that way your tuck looks finished on the inside. You don't really see a knot or anything and it's finished on the outside as well. So to stitch the remaining tucks, you have an option of using one of the grooves of the pin tuck foot and guiding this little tuck through that groove or you can align this tuck with the edge of the foot. That gives you the approximate uh, same distance as the lines that we drew and I probably didn't need to draw those lines in uh, but I did so I am going to go ahead and use I don't know I, I really like the spacing when I put it in that first groove um, to the outside there so I think I'm going to go with that and just ignore the rest of these lines so The next type of tuck that I want to show you is the reverse threaded pin tuck. And you can identify that tuck because, I don't know if you can see it well enough, but at the bottom of each tuck there's one little um, vertical stitch that goes across the tuck. Uh, this is a little tedious to do because of the threading process, but once you have that done, uh, the rest of it's pretty easy and you don't end up with the unsightly back stitching at the bottom of the tucks when you do it this way. To stitch the reverse threaded pin tuck you are going to uh, unthread the machine from the top thread and you're going to pull out a length of thread from the bobbin. Then you're going to use your needle threader and put it through the eye of the machine needle so that you can uh, get this thread in. Once you've got the thread through the needle threader, gently pull it forward and that will pull the thread uh, from the back of the needle to the front, which is exactly the opposite direction that you would be normally threading your machine needle. And then with this extra length of thread, just take it to the top of the machine and thread your machine as you would normally do it. And once you've gone through all the channels of threading, uh, you want to put your machine foot on, and I like to use the edge stitching foot 
because uh, that gives you a perfect guide for stitching. And then you want to tug on your thread so that there's no play in the thread down at the needle. So I have my crease pressed in and I have my horizontal line drawn. You want to make sure that you sink your needle into the fabric with the fabric, the fold of the fabric right next to the uh, edge, the blade of the edge stitching foot, and then you're going to sink your needle in exactly on that blue horizontal line that has been drawn. And again, my stitch length is set to a 2.0. And once you get to the top of the fabric, you finished your tuck. I'm just going to finger press this a minute. You can see here that you have a perfect, perfect tuck stitched in. So this is why it's so important to get your lines drawn in perfectly because the spacing and the stitching is going to be determined by how accurately you've drawn your lines in. Obviously on my sample piece that doesn't matter, but on your dress it is going to matter. So I do recommend practicing this on a scrap of fabric first, and then if you've had to do any adjustments uh, to your machine, I tend to write that down in ink right on the scrap fabric. And I don't think I mentioned it, but I, your needle typically is centered in the center, which is exactly where this blade is. So for my machine, I move it over five or six clicks to get this nice tiny pin tuck. Uh, obviously the further you move it over, the larger the tuck is going to be. But on this particular machine, five or six uh, clicks over to the left will be just right. Uh, on one of my other machines, it takes between 10 and 12 clicks to get the same distance. And the last tuck that I'm going to show you is just a, a regular stitched tuck. Um, no special technique or anything, uh, any machine this works with. Again, I'm going to use my edge stitching foot so that I get perfect alignment of the tuck. And I've got the needle clicked over uh, six clicks to the left of center because I know that will give the best results with this particular machine. I still have my machine set at a 2.0 stitch length. I'm going to go ahead and stitch this tuck in and I want to make sure that I stop exactly on that blue line. And when I get to the blue line, I am going to reverse and go back two or three stitches, not too many, because you don't want that heavy looking. And then if you clip your tails off close to the fabric, this is the only one that you do end up with a back stitch at the bottom. but we are using fine thread and so it won't be as noticeable. Uh, so I'm not even sure you can see that. But again, the edge stitching foot gives you a perfectly aligned tuck and at the bottom of this one, you just end up with a couple little back stitches. So choose the method that you prefer to put your tucks in with and go ahead and create tucks on your rectangular piece of fabric that you've marked. So these are my twin needle pin tucks and I rinsed out the blue lines so that you could see how pretty they turn out. Uh, and by hiding the tails on the inside, the inside has a nice finish as well. So now I'm ready to cut out, but of course, as you see, I've rinsed out my blue lines. That's not really a problem because I will just use the measuring tape and measure. So what you wanna do is 
measure what the distance is because I have torn this fabric on all four sides I know it's perfectly even so at the top here we are at 18 and a quarter inches so what you want is for the bottom to also measure 18 and a quarter inches which it does right here um, I put the sewing machine down so I could cut out without thinking I you can Go ahead and sew your gathering stitches at the bottom to get this to a perfectly even square, or you can just go rogue like I'm doing. Um, I know where the center is. You can visually see where the center is on this section of the dress. So I am going to place the pattern piece with this line in the center, I'm going to anchor it with my weights. And I'm going to put, a, because I've lost my blue marks, I am going to put a cross mark here. And that is, if I measured, that would be the center. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. My dress front out on this side and I'm only cutting up to where I've got this fold in because I didn't do the gathering stitches now the next step is to flip this over and cut out the other side of the dress. And again, I align that with my little cross hatch there. And keep this even. And I will start here at the hem. Okay, and then across the bottom here, I'm just going to go straight across from one cut edge to the other. And there you've got your dress front. So just like we did on the dress back, you want to go ahead and um, trace your neckline and your armhole seam allowances in either by placing this over your fabric or by using the special ruler. You also want to put your pleat lines in. So do that for both sides. We've finished all of our pleats now and when we come back we'll be ready to start sewing the dress together.